Hello everybody, it's Adam Hurd with 973 Ramp again. Um, so, trying a new thing where we're going to do shorter videos with more specific topics. Didn't really have game plan going into the West Coast Drive video, and you can see I kind of get rambly and kind of lose steam at the end. So, I'm going to do a quick video on the importance of symmetry in parts. Uh, I know I talked a lot about it in the West Coast Drive, but I don't really feel I demonstrated it. So, I'm going to draw one of our bearing blocks and show how... Symmetry can be really useful, and this is a really simplistic example, and there are bigger ones, but uh, it, it's a nice one that's easy to wrap your head around at first. So first I'm going to draw center point rectangle at the origin, um, and this is also part where I deviate a little bit from our everything in one feature sketch, partly because this is a part that really isn't going to change, um, and partly uh, to properly use whole wizard in the symmetry on this that concept doesn't work out well. So these are dimensions for our bearing blocks. It's what we've run forever. Um, bearing board in the center. So we're there. I mean, believe it or not, I used to draw these with the bearing board as a separate feature, and it's like, in hindsight, I have no idea why we did that. It saves a lot of time. So I make these 990 thick, like I talked about in the other video, so it's a good clamp, and do the mid plane. So right now we have a part where this rectangle in all directions is symmetrical around those planes. You easily could have done this where the origin would be in the corner, and you, you lose some of the benefit of what we're doing. Oh, I forgot a couple things that I want to do here. So I also want to put the at least the alignment for our bolt holes in this front thing. So you'll see I did a center point rectangle again to make a four bolt pattern, and then I right clicked on that loop and did select uh, chain to select it and make it construction geometry, and that's a trick to select a bunch of lines real quick. Select tangency is a similar one. And that's both are really nice tools for selecting a whole bunch of stuff at once. Um, so this is still one thing that I feel like I could do faster, placing these holes. Sometimes I have to do that as a pattern and bang it to the existing geometry. If someone has a better method for that, I would love to hear it. So once again, using the implausibly undersized holes just to indicate for hole wizard later. Um, Though actually, no, I'm going to change something a little bit to help really drive the point of symmetry home. Instead, I'm going to delete those three and just do this upper hole. Um, this It actually is more work to do what I'm about to do, but it really helps demonstrate the power of symmetry, even though this is kind of a, starting to get to be a silly example. So we do tap 1032 holes on here. Um, not sure the best way to demonstrate what we're about to do with Hole Wizard, except that I'll do half its dread up, because what we do is the machinist machines through in one operation with the drill and then just taps from each side separately. So I think when we mirror that how I want, that'll kind of show up how we want. Um, that kind of machining, you can let the sponsor decide to do that or how you decide to do it, or you can note that on the drawing. So I'm going to mirror that about the right plane, then I'm going to mirror the mirror about the top plane, then I'm going to mirror that last mirror around the front plane, and boom, now we have all of the holes, and we'd only ever have to go back and edit one. Now, even though I only have one hole in this first feature, I very specifically left it dimensioned as this pattern because I, I don't really care what the hole is left, right. I want to know the overall pattern dimension. So even though one hole is being placed, I'm still using the pattern to dimension it. Um, and I'll do that kind of stuff a lot. I feel that saves a lot. So now I'll come in, just finish the part, and add chamfers. Uh, I guess in theory you could have done the chamfer, so we'll do that. We'll take a step back. Um, you could do the chamfer here. Uh, we do 150 thou chamfer to match with the eighth inch radius, put in the tube, and let's see if it lets me add this. I know sometimes it doesn't like. Uh, yeah, it might work to make a geometry pattern. No, it won't. Okay, so it's not going to let me pattern that chamfer in the same operation. Let's see if I can pattern it. Even as a geometry pattern? Okay, so it takes it as a geometry pattern and then mirror that across the top plane. Um, I really wish patterning in Solvix was a little more robust, or mirroring, I guess. But alright, there's a bearing block, real quick. Just quick exercise in showing the power of symmetry. Obviously, as parts get more complicated, the time you save by keeping the symmetry becomes bigger. And then it also really pays off down the road. I guess the bearing block isn't the best example of that, but it really pays off with the tubes and framing stuff of having those planes placed nicely so you can start to assemble frames 
where you mate with the planes versus the face of the tube so that if you do change tube size or something you still have uh, the frame that you want. Alright, well thanks for tuning in everybody and we're going to call this one at that.